Pony guys. It is, oh, I'll just move that down a bit. I was a bit, I was a bit low on the screen there. It's October the 29th. It's Tuesday. Um, Tempest 8 in the morning. It's now light because the clocks went on uh, on Sunday morning. It's actually getting a little bit lighter, a little bit earlier for a few weeks now before we really get into the dark stuff um, that the end of November, December brings us. End of November, December, January into February are very, very dark months up here. But um, it's not like living in the Arctic Circle, though. So, you know, I'm not <laughs> going to over exaggerate it. Honestly, the second I push the door to, Nancy's immediately wanting to get through the door. Uh, which is just sorting the dishwasher, hence all the noise. It's almost like she's doing it on purpose. Nancy's opening the door. Honestly, the second I shut that door, somebody needs to go through it. That was a table for a bit. Yeah. Thank you. Right. This is how stuff's both being off work. Okay, so stitching wise, I had a good productive day yesterday. Um, I did 1147 stitches um, into the Bottle Thread Kits of Northern Lights. I have not quite finished page one. It's now there. So as you can see, I've got just this little bit here to finish off. And then there's two colours going in that bit and the white. I have to do the little white, the little white stitches aren't, aren't actually stitched in yet. So there was more than I thought. I thought there was about a thousand stitches in it. Turns out there's probably going to be about 1400 stitches in it. But I might well get these done today. Um, in about in about an hour and a half, we're heading up the road to go and get Austin. And I'll stay at my parents to have a cup of tea and a catch up with them. So I'll take this with me because that's very much easier than carting what I spun this morning. So I got up because apparently I'm programmed to get up at diddly silly time. And once I'm up, I'm kind of awake and you put the news on, you lie in bed and you think, right, this, this is non-productive. I'm just going to get up. So I just got, I, I didn't fall back to sleep. If I'd have fallen back to sleep in the lot, in like 10 minutes, I was lying there. Brilliant. I'd have had some extra sleep, but I didn't. So I got up, made myself coffee. I've watched Sarah the Stitching Mummy. I've watched um, Artie the Vintage Stitcher. They're both latest videos were up. So I've watched both of those. And... Um, I did my spin and it's the one I was slightly trepidatious about working on about on a par with world of books I was like I want to get on with it but it's going to be a fuss pot so I spun I'll put it up here because otherwise I'm just going to talk about it and, and it spun out at the best to see you with now this is my only cross stitch studio piece it is when I bought it to start it, it was my New Year's start 2021. So I've already nearly got 2021, 2022, 20, three, four. It's nearly four years old. It is at 1.27% or something. Um, I'll possibly put the correct percentage here that it started at this morning. Absolutely rubbish. Now, I've already talked a few, a uh, couple of months ago, maybe, um, that I wanted to try and dredge this piece and reenact it, re re start again on it. It was basically in the naughty corner because um, the pattern was on my old fire tablet, which I thought was dead forever, um, and I knew there wasn't a lot done on it, and I know I didn't stitch on it at the time when I bought the pattern. It was. 500,000 stitches just seemed like something I could never possibly accomplish. Um, yeah, now I'm doing a 722,000 piece and lots of other very big pieces. It just fits in with all the others. It is on a 20 count aider that has been washed at 60 degrees. So it's 20 count, but it is peculiar. It might actually be like 21 count, but it does. I find fabric doesn't shrink very much. Certainly when I shove it in the washing machine, it seems to come out exactly the same as it went in. Anyway, so the meagre, meagre, measly little bit I had done was all like, I should have centre started. Full stop, I should have centre started it. But every, I was very, very new to cross stitch then. And 
everything was top left start in the top left you start a big full coverage in the top left and you get all the sky and all the boring crap out of the way well yeah that just made me stop stitching on it completely so i'd already i'll put up the picture of where i found it this morning i'd already done a chunk of sky got bored of that found sort of the point of the ear of the wolf kind of a little bit and started to track my way down to the greens so i'm actually in the greens a bit um, so what it did this morning was i put my old fire tablet on charge it took itself a little bit of charge i connected it to the internet because it's not been connected up to the internet for probably three years and i exported the progress now i had re-bought the pattern for five dollars because i could prove that i bought it already um, and put it in pattern keeper a few months ago which i obviously talked about then and i thought this morning i thought mm, i'm gonna have to mark off all my progress i'm never going to be able to export my progress out of pattern keeper on my fire tablet well it just bluetoothed it just bluetoothed across from my fire tablet to my phone and then the the it just worked it just put the progress on and that was that it was it was fine it took a couple of minutes to get the bluetooth across because it was a big file but it did so what i've done this morning it was is some green and i've moved down and what i'm doing is tracking down i'm going to track down i'm going to spend the day i'm not going to count i'm not going to say right i'm going to count because where, where i want to stitch ideally is on the girl is on red riding hood that's where i'd like to stitch so i need to get to her but to get to her i'm going to stitch my way down because i'm not going to just count it and hope for the best because i am aware of myself and i will not get there correctly and it will be wrong and then i'll be cross and it'll all be a bit of a muddle up even though it's just green trees and it's not going to make any difference here or there whether it's a few stitches this way or a few stitches that way i'm not going to do it i'm going to stitch my way down so already today um i've stitched uh 300 odd stitches so far in in uh, this green here 471 i think it is and you can see here is old gridding and then i've picked up and i've gridded down and all i'm going to do is in the area i'm working in so i'll draw a few more lines down here in a bit in the area i'm working in i'm just going to grid it as i go because to grid this whole piece it is a fairly substantial piece of fabric this is it completely folded over so it's there's the corner so it, it's quite it's quite a long piece of fabric and it's obviously portrait rather than landscape and yeah i'm just gonna truck along and do some stitches into this today and it will be it will be a whip go for next year and it's probably going to be on my whip go board as a do 5000 stitches or one percent which is like five and five thousand five hundred i think so it's pro i'm probably going to say one percent like one whole percent which would actually probably take it to like two and a half percent sorry i'm just talking and yawning at the same time that should probably just take actually take it to like two and a half percent which we all recognize as absolutely nothing but at some point in time i really would like to finish this piece so i don't know i'll maybe ramp it up a bit later probably not next year but a couple of years down the line i might really ramp up and you know suddenly just hit my stride with this piece maybe you know once i finish the key or something really decide that i'm going to stitch on on this a lot i looked at the picture i was debating ufoing it and i've obviously decided i'm not going to so i will keep at it and that's that really okay so yesterday as well i put to, i put the stitched in zips i put little bags together i cut out a lot of other little things out of fabric and i've got a lot of stitching to do and I've had a few more pre-orders of my boxes, which I'm very, very happy and thankful for. So if you have splashed out and ordered pre-ordered my boxes, thank you so much. I am actively working on them, getting things started. And in the next couple of days, I hope to be finishing a few things. So obviously I need, if I've got 
six items in one box and six items in another there's going to be 12 items so but it will be a random dip so somebody with a box a and a box b but somebody with a box a might have some of the same items that somebody else who's bought a box b might have but there are a couple of things that are only going in box a and a couple of things that are only going in box b and if you've bought i have i have had a couple of people who have bought both boxes you will have 12 different items you're not going to get any crossover I'm, I'm very very consciously aware of what i'm doing so uh so i'm going to pack them very carefully so uh, that should all be good and I think that's all me for today. I've got to, um, I'll get Maddie up because she's going to go up to Grandma's. I'll drop Maddie off, pick up my boy and uh, get back here. We'll have some lunch and then I'm going to possibly get Austin to help me clear out the greenhouse, which is at the end, right at the end of the season. I'm just going to twist you around so you can see. Greenhouse, greenhouse, greenhouse there. You can see how old and worn out the greenhouse is just just there so end of season it needs to be it needs to be stripped out basically there's still a few tomatoes hanging on in there that's going to be a little bit of tomato chutney i should think or we'll pick off everything pull up all the plants and um, get everything boxed off for the year so there's that needs doing the raspberry patch needs sorting out and a lot of the leaves need moving so I'll probably get on and do a little bit of that. Eh, it's a fairish day, a bit cloudy, little white clouds in the blue sky. So I'm going to go and get on with a few little jobs that I'm busy with and I will see you tomorrow morning. I've got two things left and tomorrow we'll decide which which of the one I'll stitch on. You know, my, I'll know my last two days. I have got Ariel and I have got the Renato Parolin trees. So that's all I've got left on my on my on my wheel now. So tomorrow I'll do a final spin and then I'll know what's the 30th and I'll know what's the 31st. But for right now, I'm going to maybe try. I'm actually going to really try and just finish off that page because it's so close. It's so close and I'm going to have a good day chuggling. Possibly hope I'm hoping for the thousand. A thousand stitches into a, a, a full coverage like this seems like a good get, good goal for a day. But I am going to be busy today doing lots of little other things as well because I've got a lot of little things to make. Right, guys, I will see you later on tomorrow, probably about around about the same time. And I'll see you then. Hi, guys. Good morning. It is um, Wednesday, October the 30th. I have two days left of my spin thing. And yeah, it's been a really good month. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I know now I've done my spin for this morning, so I know what today is and I know what tomorrow is. So I've got my projects ready, sorted, except I haven't got them in reach, so I'll have to go and reach them over in a second. Um, didn't get as much stitching done yesterday as I was hoping I would do. I had quite a busy day. I went and got my little boy and we had a nice, a nice sort of day together. Um, we stripped out the greenhouse and there's going, there's a whole load of he, he picked all the remaining tomatoes off the tomato plant so we've got everything from tiny little like really hard green ones to quite nice overripes they've been soaking overnight ready to make turn into chutney Richard will make some chutney today while I do an awful lot of stuff on my sewing machine um, I've also got a lot of polymer clay to deal with today which is all ready and prepped and I just needed the light to get on so it's half past seven in the morning well it's 25 to 8 now um, and because the clocks rolled on Sunday, we're currently a bit lighter in the mornings, which is which is um, OK. Means I can get on earlier. Um, yeah. So yesterday, not quite as much as I was hoping to do. So this morning I have put in the further 48 stitches I needed to finish the page on the Sycamore Gap. Page one is complete. So this is the start of the hill that drops down to where the tree was is in this picture but it has gone now and then the other side will the the page three will look very like a page one so i finished it this morning the last little bit of stitching was putting in the stars um but yesterday i put in 344 into this and today 48 so there was indeed about 400 stitches left to go but i didn't quite get them done last night but i'm very pleased with it so all i did with this other than use the kit 
is I've changed it for an 18 count Ada onto a scrap of something looks like hobby craft Ada to me like no brand Ada but once it's in my Q-snap it's nice and fine um, the boffy threads threads are not shredding at all that's the only trouble with this cheap Ada is it can shred your threads but as you can see from the colours I've left simply because they're going to be used I, I had a good chunk of them left to go and they're going to be used immediately on this next page down so I've left those threads ready to go um, not not I've not parked them I've plonked them but I figure the colours there's only four there and I can see which ones they are so I've not I've not put them where they're going to be stitched next I've just put them below the last stitch in that colour and the white similarly is just dumped out the top because I assume there will be some stars and there's no point me finishing off the white battling it back onto the, the thing so there we go sycamore gap page one complete actually that's a task tick tick so next year that will be on my Whipgo board my non-full cover oh it's full coverage my full coverage Whipgo board and it will be a one more page like another page yeah it'll be a page I think a thing a page in a month will be more than I can do on that it's quite a lot of stitches how many stitches is that page 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 7 7 14 21 28 35 three and a half thousand stitches there in that page two pages should i say two pages would i do seven thousand stitches in a month do seven thousand <laughs> not this month i usually do seven thousand stitches in a month on my treasure hunt bookshelf i think bearing in mind that i'm not going to be scattergunning my stitching next year i think i'll put two pages on the Whipgo board and it'll be one that if I don't get done it'll roll and be outstanding until I get it finished to be sorted to me but I can certainly aim for two pages in a in month now the better to see you with yesterday I did 592 stitches and this morning I have done 200 and I've stopped because I'm going to work on today's piece now so yesterday I picked up I think I picked up this screen here um, you can see that is the tippy top, you can see where the ear comes in, the first ear, and then I've come down the green, you can see that's, that's old gridding, and then yesterday's gridding, and then this morning's gridding. So I'm basically gridding up as I go, the edge of the piece is here, I've put a piece of the um, Guterman filament down the side so I can clearly see the edge. So I'm just heading down through the trees. That is literally three colours of green there and I've parked I've parked my green because I've stopped for now this this does ramble just a little bit further this way but I've I got to 200 stitches and thought right it's light enough do my little bit of video and get on so it's it's had some progress it is now at 1.38 percent I think it was at 1.24 percent so yeah almost nothing I need to sit and work on this for weeks a couple of weeks so whip go for this one as well as i basically tomorrow i can sort out my pieces from this month and the ones that i know are going to be whip go pieces can go in one place like both of those will, will be will be held for whip go and the pieces that I'm happy I've put some work into but aren't going to make it on sort of go board. Bear in mind I have a lot of other whips that haven't come out this month. This is about, I've touched about half in this month because I have 65-ish, we'll, we'll find out at the end of December, about 65-ish I think whips. I think I sit between 60 and 70 pretty much all the time, which is a lot. But to have touched the well by the end by tomorrow i'll have touched 31 32 treasure hunt bookshelf i'll have touched 32 which is roughly half so that's not bad for a month's work and i've put in i have done an awful lot of stitches this month we are i will do i will collate up my numbers and it'll obviously be in this video that you get the full numbers but i think i'm going to be knocking on the door of between 25 and 30,000 stitches for the month 
which is nearly a thousand a day. And there are days where I've only done four, about 400 stitches, but there are days that I've done 2000 stitches. So well, there's been two days, I think, where I've touched 2000. So I'm gonna actually do my numbers and see. I'm quite enjoying keeping track. It's easy with Pattern Keeper, not so easy with a paper pattern, but when I'm marking off a chart, I can simply count as I mark off. There's, that's not that hard. So what I'm saying is going forward, I might well keep track a little bit more because I'm interested to see where I am. For the last couple of years, when I've done my whip rate, I have written down my stitch number and my percentage of anything in Pattern Keeper. I just never know which book it's in because <laughs> I'm hopeless in keeping it being organisational like that. Hopefully it will all get a little easier as I get it. I'm feeling a little more organised with things as time goes on. Right, I need to get myself together and start making things. I need to make myself a cup of coffee. Yeah, there's lots of little bits and pieces lying around me. I will, so there's no point, there's no point telling you because this video will be posted afterwards, but um, I did get another order overnight for my uh, Blossoms box and I will be pulling the listings at midnight tomorrow, midnight my time tomorrow, because I have enough to do right now. <laughs> They've sold slightly better than I was anticipating, so I've got a little bit more to do than I thought I would. So I am going to just buckle in and get my stuff made. Right guys, I'm gonna go and do that right now. I'm gonna make myself a cup of coffee and I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go and sit down at my sewing machine and get on with it rather than procrastinating all day. And also, oh my God, my spin, my spin, my stitching. Of course, I'm going to be stitching today. I'm just going to grab my pieces. Hang on. Right. Had to do a little bit of a rummage there. So today, here's my spin for this morning. Two things on my wheel. It's going to be either or. It's either going to be this one or this one. And as you can see, it has come out as aerial. And we are always happy to visit with Ariel. Here is Ariel, my Man Manzano Ariel, 16 count gridded by Bar Ada. She's currently there, she's blowing out, she's much lighter in there, she's a bit better there. Um, and this year, I've put in quite a bit already on her this year, she's come, I've brought her right over here to the edge. But she is a long way off because she fits this fabric. She fits this fabric so she's quite a long way off and today I'm covered in 823 right piece of 823 on me there I will certainly hold on to that that's that's treasure on the bookshelf colour um what shall I do today hmm something we can see a very definite difference with right I think today I'm going to see if I can get this hair filled in. That's quite, that looks like a useful thing for me to do today. I'm going to see if I can fill in her hair. Or whatever the hell this is, this little bit. Oh, it's the top of her skirt. It's the top of her fin, isn't it? Like the, the curl, the curve at the top of her, at the top of her fin. Right. I'm going to start here and see if I can fill in all these little random Certainly the ninja stitches. Yes, I do have a problem with ninja stitches and see if I can maybe fill in inside the black lines a little bit. That's what I'm going to plan to do today. So I'm going to put my cue snap on right now while I'm gabbling. So let's put here there. This piece is disgustingly dirty. It, I think I think I take a little bit more care now. That I'm not stitching on my knee in my bedroom, drinking slopping coffee all over everything, which is basically how I rolled before. I I now look at these and go, yuck, it's disgusting, rather than just picking it up and stitching on it and not noticing that yuck, it's disgusting. So I think I think I am getting a little bit more careful. This has had a revolting coffee incident. Can you even see the colour on that? That's really bad. But what gets stitched over? get stitched over and what doesn't will be framed it could be matted right up to the stitching either way and there we go so today I am within this piece here so this is my starting point for the day 
I'm going to see if I can get that little bit done and then pick up some of these colours. Hopefully, there's no way, there's no way it'll be right. Hopefully these are all like one, two, three, four, five of the same colour. What do we think? Do we think it's going to be one colour, one colour, one colour? One? Yeah, probably. Anyway, that's what we're doing today. Um, as well as all the things I need to make. And then tomorrow, 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 we are going to be stitching on Renato Parolin's Seasons Trees as the last piece for the month. So it's the only thing that hasn't spun on the wheel and that's there. That's where I left it after one day of Flossmas last year. So I think tomorrow, well I'll speak to you tomorrow, but I think I'm just going to work on tree tomorrow. And that of course is where I have restarted World of Books because this is a this is a half yard. I thought this was a whole yard. This is half a yard of vellum. 18 count Ada vellum and it is beyond beautiful and I love it dearly. And I'm going to put two very lovely, both long skinny pieces. So that's going to be tomorrow stitching. Lovely, that's for tomorrow. Oh, I saw an Instagram post from Kim Hi Kim, um, Hollenbach, who does the, uh, she's she's uh, full coverage fanatics and she's the Spartan stitcher so I'm sure we all watch Kim and if you don't you should because she's brilliant. She just shows her stitching and just delivers it. Here's my stitching. There you go. Um, and she has got the little skinny cuts from cutting down to, to stitch a big haid the little the long skinny pieces now I've had the long skinny pieces which I've used I've cut I've used for things before this was one oh sorry Nancy Nancy's asleep on it this was one this is exactly this is it Kim this was my 20 count strip that I over dyed and started these guess what's not going to be finished for Halloween it's still got it's still got the cat what the cat saw stitched onto it the two little I, I, I will, I'll get these done, but there were, this, this was one, I could have used this piece, I think I have another one, she has said, look, why don't we use these for Randall Spangler's books, he's got dragons, he's got cats, he's got dogs, now there's a dragon one, that the book itself is orange tone, and it's, it's the cookbook, and I'm wondering whether I might jump on board, and finally I've got another piece it is Ada I think it's 18 and it will be it'll be just fine um that that was 20 I think I've got a piece of 25 which is a bit bit tiddly for me 25 is not my sweet spot 20 is my sweet spot 18 is like a walk in the park 16 <laughs> 16 is like brilliant um but I think I've got a piece, and if I have, when we get the next Haid sale, I might buy the the dragon. I don't. I, the cats and the dogs are a bit, a bit um, cutesy, um, and none of them, none of them immediately are any of my cats. I don't go, oh gosh, that one's Sid, or the black cat isn't Cosmo. The black cat is sensible. I saw somebody's finish of a black cat on. Um, I think it was. Um, I think it was in the full coverage I think it might have been full coverage fanatics I think there was there was a black cat in the rain and it was like oh I am really oh, it was a finish and it was beautiful that looked a bit more like Cosmo anyway um yeah the cats and the dogs don't don't speak to me but obviously the draglins are draglins so that's fine so I think I might if I can find a piece of Ada and then when the next hay sale comes up I think I might treat myself and I'll jump on board with you Kim and we can we can all stitch a Stitch a long skinny book, their story keeps, but they're they're literally 80, 80 stitches wide or something. They're, they're, they're really narrow, so they fit these leftover pieces so that anyone who's got a big head and has cut their fabric down to fit um, has got. So I have I do I think I have another piece. That was that was one of them, but I think I've got another one. So if it fits it, I will I will jump on. Yeah, so I saw that, and that was good, and I'm going to hop on with that and stitch along skinny. And then eventually that can go in the kitchen-y area, because that's, my kitchen's kind of orange now. I have a grey and orange tiled kitchen, which is not, not nasty at all, but yeah, lovely kitchen. And uh, I have a 
chef who makes food in it so that's always good right guys i have to get on now it's five to eight right i'm going to give myself an hour at the sewing machine i almost want to stamp my feet and do some stitching but i really need to get on at the sewing machine so i'm going to go and do that right and then i will reward myself with some stitching i will see you later guys i'll see you tomorrow and that will be the end of October I will wrap up and then I will might give myself a couple of days off filming get myself into November and then I'll do a wrap up for this get this posted and then just talk about November and then we are on the slippery slope down November to Flossmus but I'm kind of in the swing of this now so we'll see how we do I'll see you later guys good morning guys we've done it it's Halloween it is October the 31st of um October today and I have stitched on well 30 because I haven't started today stitching yet 30 different projects in this month um, yesterday I spun Ariel which gave me Renato Parolin's trees for today which I put down again hang on no oh, it's here um, and I'll give you an idea yesterday of how busy I was making the Flossmus things I stitched 260 stitches yesterday that was it plus the 40 something stitches on sycamore gap but that you know that's all i did yesterday i was so busy making um needle minders and <laughs> just trying to get on top of the things that i've committed myself to make um, because of course I'm me, I'm not just going to go, yeah, I'll do, I'm like, oh my God, it needs to be like this. And then I can add this and add this and add this and do this and do this. So I want it to be just right, but we did pop out and get a few little bits and pieces. I now have the tissue paper to go in the boxes. I have the uh, wrapping paper to wrap the little mystery parcels. I have all sorts of little goodies that are all the little finishing off bits that aren't the homemade bits you know all the presentation stuff is all on the table that Richard only just cleared and was so happy his table was cleared and now it's covered in flossmus um so yeah I didn't get a lot done um I have my Lizzie home she came in on the train last night the train was uh three quarters of an hour-ish late leaving London um so she got she got home at 20 past 10 last night so we were quite late to bed so I did get up quite late this morning um but I have my Lizzie home she looks so good she looks happy she looks well I'm so pleased to have her home I've got her home until Sunday she's going out with friends and things but she is home until Sunday so that's marvellous probably not late enough to cross over with Flora coming home but nevertheless that's all good Laura's still messaging me every day, letting you know she's um alive, really. That I'm just getting a an I am still alive check in. <laughs> that is good enough for me. Right, so Ariel, I have but I mean partly because my stitches are low because I didn't just block stitch, I have been filling in gaps. So here's her hair. There are still gaps. So I filled in a lot of the odd single stitches and also quite a lot of them carried down into her body. I tried to fill in all of this bit but there's two colours I'm adrift I've probably got them upstairs I have written them down to take up and look for but honestly yesterday I was just busy making things that wasn't stitching so she's now here and I'm before I do anything else today I'm going to put in a few a lot of this is chunky stitching but I thought right I'll start trying and get some of these little stitches done as you can see, there's still odd stitches in her hair, still to go. <sighs> I will get there. But I filled in quite a lot of them, and now you can start to see the, the way Mandy, Mandar Mandy Manzalo's colours work. The way she has these little like blobs of light within. And Ariel does have a lot of green in her skin, which gave me as a very inexperienced cross stitcher when I started the heebie jeebies most of her arm is green yeah it's shading on her and she's going to be perfect <laughs> so there she is right now but the next time when I do um 
another another piece to this video before I upload this video I will have had a little bit more go a go at her she's currently sitting I think just about bang on 17% so I don't even think I've put a whole percent into her but you know yesterday I was kind of busy so today and again I don't know how much I'm going to get done today probably very very little I've got my Renato Paralin which is my last last project last project over my Renato Paralin Christmas tree a uh, winter tree and that's the start I have on him and they're four separate pieces the four seasons but I am going to stitch them in a long line and just carry the border and I will just change the colours of the border as the border changes so lots of robins because it's Renato Paralin and very like I have fit, I did originally like my first year stitching my second year stitching I stitched Renato Paralin's Christmas tree pattern which is epic it's an epic undertaking I had no idea when I started stitching it just how much work there was in it but I got it finished and got it given to my parents for Christmas they do have it 2019 Christmas I finished it they do have it hanging on their wall all year round which I'm very grateful for because it is such it was such an undertaking I, I post a picture of it generally every Christmas when I'm there but um, yeah so I love his little trees and well I mean, his trees full stop oh, I love that Christmas tree and you know it's one of those it's one of the few patterns that I would go back and stitch again I really would I would go and stitch it again because I love it that much so um, it's like made such a mess of the pattern and the pattern's very hard to get hold of the Renato Paralin patterns are very hard to get hold of you could he does have an Etsy shop um, last I know, I haven't checked for a little while. Last I know, there you can buy his stuff on Etsy. They ship from Italy. They're paper patterns. They are printed on the cream cardstock and they ship from Italy. Um, the other place I've bought them from in the past is Casa Semina, which is an online cross-stitch emporium. There's everything known to man. It's like one, two, three stitch for Italy. Um, I used to order from them all the time they delivered the day after if you ordered it there was a one day wait and then it arrived and the shipping to the UK was like three pounds or something it was amazing and then Brexit happened and that all stopped so the last time I tried to order anything from them the shipping was like it was literally like 12 pounds with full VAT being slapped on us you know a reasonably small order and I just went nah, no thanks I'll just I'll just do without and ordered from other places which is a real shame because I really, really rate their site. And it's a good place to look if you are looking for something really old or not really old, but difficult to find and it's out of stock in all the usual cross-stitch places because everybody goes there and buys them. Um, Casa Semina is a good place to go and look for odd things and odd fabrics and odd cuts of fabric and things like that. But be aware they're in Italy and they ship from Italy and you've got all that to deal with. But yeah, Renato Paralin patterns, they used to carry an awful lot of them. I don't know if they still do. And as I said, you can buy them on Etsy, but they are paper patterns that come in the mail. So, um, but I love his patterns. I'm very lucky to have, I'm going to say seven or eight of his patterns. So I'm very happy with the ones I have and I will happily stitch on them. There's only one that I really, really rate and want to get hold of. I nearly ordered, but of course it was coming from Italy. Paper pattern, stupidly expensive for a, a single sheet of card. There's a bunch of mistletoe with a with a bow and I just love it. It just looks so cool. And I still and you think, you know, you you you, you change your mind and you you know your um what you like changes over time. I still really like it. So if I ever find it somewhere I can actually just grab it, I will, but I'm not going to order it specifically because it's mm, a lot um, for a single sheet of cardboard. Anyway, that's my little Renato Paralin rant. Somebody did ask where you can get hold of the patterns. And yeah, the answer is not easily. But they are out there. They are out there. I've got a, my needle. Is, my needle's actually nearly done. It's got a real bend on it. And it's got a fuzzball getting stuck in the eye. Not that you can see it, but I can see it. Just, that's what I was fussing with. Anyway. So I, I just thought I'd jump on and do my video. It is 20 past 8, 8.25. I'm going to make another coffee. Um, we're going to go at half past nine up to collect Austin. Lizzie and Austin are going to have a day together, which they badly need. 
but I'm gonna go and do a little bit of her hair and I'm going to do some extra. I need to get another one of my, one of my cutters out. I'm gonna do another polymer clay item that I've just suddenly decided I'm going to do. This is this is snowballing. <laughs> um, I was going to make 12 items and it, every box would have every like B box would have these six items and every A box would have those six items. I'm now saying I'm going to have probably 15 or 16 items and there's definitely a couple of things that's going in box A and a couple of things that's going in box B and there'll be no overlap at all with those. Oh, I, this, this is me saying thank you so much guys I've had more orders than I was ever going to expect so I'm I'm not bulking up I'm going right well maybe I could make some of these or I could make some of those so instead of just making this many of that item I'm making some of these some of these some of these some of these so I'm going to lay all the boxes out in front of me and go right they're definitely they're definitely they're definitely and then I'm literally going to have everything in their little packet with the number on it and I'm going to go blop, 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 until everybody's got six so it's going to be a random a random dip the only ones I'm going to be very careful with are the couple that have ordered two boxes and you will obviously have 12 different items you won't get I'm not going to randomly plop the same number into box A and box B for you anyway that's it's forefront of my mind I know you're getting a lot of it in this video but this is what I'm spending these days when I'm off work this is what I'm doing I'm making items so it's really at the forefront of my mind it would have been lovely to just lay back and stitch but do you know what we're gonna have a I need to get this done now so that I can chill out and have a lovely a lovely um relaxed December is what I'm heading for I really truly fingers crossed hope I have a really chill December because that would be really nice <laughs> Anyway, guys, I'm going to go and put um, Ariel back in the queue snap, put in a couple of strands on the, into her hair, and then I'm going to make one more item of polymer clay, and then I am going to bake off the polymer clay. I've still got some little things outstanding, but I'm not going to get them finished this morning. So I'm going to get the oven. As soon as I've got these other things done, I'm going to get the oven cranked up, and I'm going to get some stuff baked. And then I'm going to feel a lot more organised. I'm going to feel a lot better because that will be a big chunk sorted enough for me to go, right, I just need to finish them off rather than, oh my God, I need to do these from scratch. But I'll catch you. I probably will pitch in tomorrow at some point um, just to tell you what I'm going to be doing um, going forwards into November. And I will see you then. Bye-bye. Hi guys, I'm back. Um, feels like forever since I've recorded because I missed the day there. It is uh, Saturday, November the 2nd. So yesterday um, was the last day. Uh, yesterday. Oh, good crikey. I might have missed the 31st as well. <laughs> I did I did the morning of the 31st. Yes, so yesterday I should have wrapped up what I did. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't get a lot of stitching done. The reason I didn't record was because I didn't get a lot of stitching done either um, on the 31st or yesterday. But I have got a little bit of progress to show you on the last two pieces that I stitched on, um, which I kept stitching on Ariel and I had the Renato Parolint, um Seasons Trees, the Winter Tree. So I'm going to show you my progress on those and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do as a normal progress, normal we go back to a normal format of around about once a week until we get to the end of November and then we'll jump into Flossmas. So two months this year, I'm going to be recording every day. But obviously in, in December, I post every day rather than collating all the little clips together. And this has been a load of fun to do. But you understand it's a lot to get on the camera every day. And I live in a very, very busy household and yap 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 I work full time and yap 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 yeah it's not always easy for me to just come and sit down and just do a bit, quick bit of camera especially now the conservatory is only light between eight in the morning and realistically about six in the evening so I'm not always here in the window when it's actually light in here and I have peace and quiet to record so we'll go back to normal service over November where I post about once a week one update once a week and then 
obviously December's different, but December's December. And so, Ariel, I did carry on with her quite a bit. Um, and I've stopped recording my stitches, of course, because I got to the end of the month. I am gonna keep track next year. There's no point me counting for November. But on the 31st of October, I did another 289 stitches into Ariel and that's take that took her to 17.16 percent i think i've put in i think we're at about 17 and a half percent now i have put in some more so she's now here and what i'm trying to do is finish her hair and i am keeping her out and the black there's a lot of black missing under the hair here and her thumb there's a lot of it her thumb looks huge because that that there that's her hand there her thumb looks huge but realistically there's black stitching there because her hand is sort of like this but there's a lot of and at the moment it looks really strange so I'm going to put in the black stitches there just to make her hand look normal and there's there's black stitches missing in her hair still so there's actually only three colours left in her hair and black so I have all three colours pulled although I need to go and see if I have another skein of this one because I've got the last little bit split up already I'm sure I've got another another skein of it and if I haven't I will add it to the list that I'll go and get another one when I get another one but my aim on Ariel before I put her away hopefully before the whip parade is to get her hair all finished um there may or may not be a couple of little stitches here and there whether I can be bothered pulling the individual colours to do those individual stitches this go round we will see and then next year we'll see what I do with her because although I really should work on this beautiful blue background, I also want to work on her tail. So I might do half and half. I might say my um, whip go when, when Ariel comes up might be 1% on her tail and 1% on the background, maybe. And I think that's a doable goal for her for a month because I think she's 110,000 maybe, so it's about 2,000 stitches, I think, for 2%. I'm gonna get all my numbers sorted. I figured out my whip go. I figured out what I'm gonna do for whip go. We're going to have a slightly interactive whip go. So I will show you that after my whip parade. And I've got a lot of hashing out to do with that yet, but we'll show you that after my whip parade. And then on the 31st of October, I worked on Renato Parolin's trees. I put in 584 stitches and also I put some in this morning. So it's probably at about 700 stitches in now. And it now looks like this because I simply worked on the one colour. I took the, I had I had a strand, so I, I finished I finished my strand on the border there. Um, doing the border. I want to take I want to use, I want to finish this symbol. Um, so this is the bottom, this is the main tree, um, and I'm using, I think it's bramble bush, I think. It's one of them anyway. It's a really nice variegated brown, and I believe all the trees are the same, are the same, like, format. Um, I think they're all shades of, the, the palette is very, what I would consider autumnal, so this one, but I appreciate I can't do white and blue leaves on a tree, so yes, um, my, my trees will, I might change the, what am I trying to say? As I work through, I might change up the colours of the leaves to make them more reflective of the seasons if they're all very muted. So the spring might have a more pale green. The summer's going to be a bit bolder on the green. The autumn, I'm going to try and put more reds in. And then the winter tree has got these little old shriveled up leaves on that are all, that are all like, they're faded and muted. So as I work through these trees, and they're all going to be on the one, because I'm doing them all in one long line, um, I will, I'll figure out the colours of each tree as I go, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and then obviously they are then reflected in the border as well. So these are the winter tree colours. So they are all quite muty, very autumnal colours, but I'm going to try and pick slightly richer reds, slightly richer, more, you know, more autumnal a little bit bolder colors for the autumnal tree which will be next this way so that's where i am on the tree i'm going to finish off this symbol and so he's still in the queue snap as is ariel so there we go now for 
um, October, oh, there's notes on everything. I for the, So for the first 15 days of October, I stitched 13,091 stitches. And for the end of October, there's my total, 30,255 stitches. And when I did my sums on the evening, Halloween evening, I just said to Richard, I haven't got 750 stitches in me to make it 31,000 for a thousand stitches a day, average. But if that's what I average, around about, over, over a month, around about a thousand stitches a day. I think I have stitched an awful lot in October. I think it's because I've had a lot of choices. I've had a lot of different, um, a lot of different, it's kept me busy. It's kept me in, interactive with it and I've forgotten something oh I can see it hang on it's there so I think I think that's really kept my interest for the whole month and I've enjoyed it so much I really have enjoyed the month so much I'll definitely be doing it again maybe do it twice a year and just touch some whips. I've touched 31 of my whips plus my treasure hunt bookshelf, which we aren't going to talk about because I think I am 0.6 of a percent short of the month. Um, November, I am going to put in a lot of stitches. I'm going to try and catch myself up. If I don't, I don't. If I can, I will, but we'll see how we get on. So I promised myself that if I got through and did this and completed my task which I've thoroughly enjoyed and has been no stress and no bother because it was there wasn't any set parameter as to how many stitches I must stitch every day there wasn't so it's not been a hassle to do it um, I said I would reward myself with a new start and I, I would be looking to do the Barbara Anna Christmas thing which yes I'm really still wanting to stitch that very much however while I was looking for the world of books, I came across, I'm perusing Etsy, which is dangerous. I came across, I actually bought two patterns and I don't have the designers or anything. So I am going to stop the video and I'm going to find the names of the designers and where I got them from. I have a very, very big, long, brand new pencil to write in my wonderfully, it's not fallen to pieces at all book. You've all met me. At least I think you have. And if you, this is the first video of me you've ever seen, at least go back to the beginning of October and find out what the hell I've been doing in the last month. But I think I think you're all. I think we're all know. We all know what I'm doing, right? I'm just going to go. You'll you'll not even notice. I'll be back in a sec. Right. I was never even gone. So uh, I've just been into my pattern keeper. So Ariel is at seventeen point six two, is where she is presently. But that'll change. Right. So I've been and collated all my information here. So what was going, so the Barbara Anna, I had picked out a piece of um, Lakeside Needlecraft fabric. It's called Elemental and I have got the, this is, I, I did join their Fabric of the Month Club, but so far I've only bought about three in about 12 months because a lot of them are not my colorway. This one, Elemental, really is, it's a, uh, very blue grey, very muted, and they're they're fabric flares basically, so they're printed. And I I these are my favourite fabrics to work on. So this is a thirty six count, and this is what I'd put the Barbara Anna on because I can do one strand over two on this, and it will be perfect. So that's what I picked out for my Barbara Anna piece of um, elemental lakeside needlecraft i have got acrylic paint on my fingers by the way in case you're realizing i'm i'm grubby it's very navy blue i am in the thick of making things at the moment hence why i've not got quite so much stitching done anyway i literally have a production line going um which is both fun and not stressful because i'm on top of what i'm doing and i know exactly i've written myself little cheat cards for everything i'm making so i know exactly what the steps i need to do i've gone off paste right so the Barbara Anna definitely wants to stitch it. I haven't bought the pattern yet. If I bought the pattern, I probably would have already started it, but I haven't. But as I say, while I was looking for World of Books, I found two patterns on Etsy and obviously bought them both. And I'll show you them now. This one here 
is called the Folk Art Pumpkin and it is from, and I will put it up on the screen, Tam Stitch Designs. And I absolutely love that. And I thought I would stitch that on this here, which it will, it will fit, I have checked. It's a piece of Zweigart printed um, Lugana. Looks like it could be 28 count. And I've obviously tested out a few stitches here and I have used it for something quite small or I've already cut off half because it's a funny wee skinny piece. So I don't know if it's been gifted to me as a funny wee piece or whether I've bought it and cut it in half, but it's a long way half, which is an unusual for me. I usually I usually just use the piece whole and then chop it out later. That's much more that's more much more likely to have been me cutting out something I've actually finished. Um, Anyway, so I was going to put the pumpkin on this, but that's not the one I'm going to start. I'm going to pop that back with my fabric and maybe start on that next year around about autumn because I absolutely love it. But it's now fast, fastly approaching not being seasonal. Now what I found, the other pattern I found, which I think I'm going to start, and I'm going to start on a beautiful piece of Be Stitch Me Scotsman, which was given to me. Oh, yeah lovely friend, um, which is this colour here. I fold it in half. It's mm, it, it's the bluest of blue greys. That's what I would call Air Force Blue, because that's, that's the colour I'd call that. It's not grey, it's definitely blue. It's showing beautifully, actually. That is the colour it really is. The mottling on it is unbelievably subtle. It is mottled, but only just there only just it's beautiful so i think i'm going to put foxy loxy on this because it's 40 count i can use one strand with two i just called him i haven't even shown you the pattern it is a fox i've just called him foxy loxy so obviously i'm going to start him because i've called i've named him right let me show you the picture look at this look at this fox isn't it outstanding now this is from Stitch Heart UA. He's called Autumn Fox. It is a Ukrainian designer, which I am always, always happy to support. But it wasn't deliberate because I just saw him. I couldn't unsee him. There's only like seven or nine colours in him. And I'm going to stitch him on this piece of this. And I've just decided in the moment, I will buy Barbara Anna. I might start her later in the month, nearer, nearer Christmas. My Flossmas stitching is going to be not portable. My flossmas stitching is not portable in my realm of how I roll. So I might stitch my Barbara Anna in my breaks at work when I'm sitting in the car waiting for Flora to finish school. Things like that. I think I'm going to do that in flossmas. So I'm going to do that later. I'm going to keep my fabric out so I know what I've got and I might start my Foxy Loxy as my reward for doing what I said I was going to do, actually stitching 31 days, 31 projects, spinning and going. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I cheated once. I cheated twice, where I spun a project and went, ugh, I really am not feeling that today, and spun again. So twice in 31 days, I spun and went, no, not that one, please not that one today. And I thought, right, if I'm not feeling that today, I'm not going to want to stitch on it. I'll spin again. So I spun again <laughs> and went, yeah, I like that. I'll do that. But the projects that I vetoed, actually, when I did work on them, I really enjoyed them. But the day I spun them, I was like, oh, really? No, I, I just, I'm not into that today. I don't want to have to think about that too much today. They were both ones I had to think about and do a little jiggling with. Um, so yeah <laughs> cheap to cheap but it was only twice in the whole month that I did it and uh, that's fine so Autumn Fox is going to be my reward on this beautiful piece of Be Stitch Me fabric and I will work it so that I I start and I'm hoping he'll fit on about this much of this fabric so that I will have this much of this fabric left it's a fact it's a fat quarter I've got so I'm really, I'm really hoping that I can um, keep, keep hold of as much of it as possible because it is absolutely glorious. But I think he's got to really pop on the grey and the blue-grey. 
and he is very autumnal and going into winter so and also the fabric will show as well the fabric will show through which you know when you're using a beautiful piece of fabric you do actually want to see some of the fabric so that's that so that's, that's my reward so basically that's october finished i've had a blast it's been so much fun if i hadn't have been so <laughs> gung-ho about flossmas and getting myself all sorted out in advance go me i would have done a lot more stitching but the last week of the last week of october where i've been off work has been absolutely eclipsed by making things which i'm having super fun with as well because i'm not making anything i'm not enjoying everything going in my flossmas boxes is things i am enjoying making um, new things that I've not made before, old things that I just I make and I feel comfy doing. So I'm hoping we're all going to enjoy it. I am making extras. There will be, there will be, a season of it. <laughs> so, so there we go. Anyway, right. So what have I done for November? So November is going to be predominantly. I'm going to try and get on with my treasure hunt bookshelf. I've moved my cue snap. I'm in a new area. I don't know why I'm stitching in my new area. I've only moved it a bit along from Cinderella, but I've not looked at the picture. So whatever's going to turn up in, in my space is what's turning up. And it's different colours. And yeah, I've left a thousand ninja stitches and, and loads of bits, which have got like 15 stitches and change the colour. Yeah, I've left them. Yeah, never mind. Just get my cameras got into funny. Um, you know, it gives you your timestamp along the top as you're recording. It's doing something funny. Anyway, I hope it's OK. So for the rest of November, I've pulled, I've kept out, I've not pulled, I've kept out some of the projects that I've worked on this month with an aim to doing a bit more. And this is the perfect example. So I've kept out meditation because I want to finish this 310. I want to get my 310 in this finished and my 310 there finished. And then the, the next colour, which is in this band, it'll just go round here, the next colour. But I definitely want to get at least this 310 done here. So I've kept out meditation just to, just because I didn't quite get as much as I wanted. These are things I didn't quite get the progress I wanted to get on in one day. So the meditation, I'm going to try and get this bit done. I've kept out the key because simply put, I love stitching on it and I, I want more progress. So I kept out the key and I'm going to keep working on this brick here by the side of this wing. I've got a lovely, I've got 3042 possibly joined on. That looks like what the cat saw. Oh, I need, I need to pull him out as well. He's not here. I need to keep out what the cat saw. Oh, he's here. Right. Yeah, I've got him. Right. He's in my pile now as well because he needs doing. Right. Yep. It's the same colour. <laughs> I thought it was. So I've, I've kept out the key and I'm going to keep working on this brick here because I love it so much. I have kept out Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow because I would like to get my block done for the year. So that's where the block currently is and I'd like to get it done. There's not a great deal left on it. It's a big lightning bolt. The rest of the houses and I've done I've done a good deal of the houses actually. A lot of it's just fill in now which I can do pretty quickly. And there's a big lightning bolt and I think another four bats and some words. And words are easy peasy, aren't they? So I've kept him out because I'd like to get him finished this year. I have, oh, I'll, uh, mm, yeah, I'll put him back in the pile. I've just decided, because I should have kept him out, what the cat saw, because I really would like to get him done. I really would just like to get him done quite close. I've also got the Four Seasons Girls, um, my Nitka Moscow Barbara Anna kit that I changed the fabric out on. Um, you see, I, that's how I know that Barbara Anna will look lovely on Elemental because this is, this is granite and this is the Elemental. You can see the difference in the colour there. That's about perfect, actually. That's, that's the, there we go. That's perfect. But she's nearly there. <laughs> annoyingly close. I've got the bottom of her dress to do, her feet and this bit of garland and she's done. So really I need to get her done and then in the spring I'll get spring done. But if I can get those two finished it gives me the impetus next year 
to do um, summer and autumn. And they, if, if, if they go on my whip go board, it'll be the whole piece. It'll be stitch summer. Probably only one. And then I've kept out my little Shannon Christine design stamps because I now have got eight of 12 done and it's totally feasible. I can sit down and stitch one and then stitch another one and then stitch another one. And then when I've stitched the last one, I'm finished. So I've kept them out because they're feasibly close to a finish. And just for option's sake, I have kept out happily ever after. I'd really like the border done. I'd really like the, not the border, I'd really like the boxes done. I know I've stitched one little bunny and I'm, I'm going to stitch, I'm going to try the purple or, and I really want to try the purple or a fill as well, a 12 weight or a fill that I found. I really want to try that. So I've, if I can finish off the boxes, I will reward myself with a little bit of purple and then I'll be totally happy with that one. So I've kept out that one there and I've also kept out a very, very old whip, the Peaceful Street whip, because I forgot about it for so long, literally years, possibly three years, I completely forgot about Peaceful Street. It's been flashed up in my whip parade and then put away. And you know what? It's not going to kill me to finish this one, is it? Just to, just, you know, to, to keep on trucking, to keep on going. Gosh, that's been knocking around so long. That is, that's fuzzy like yarn. That looks like Angora, not Angora, mohair yarn, this piece of thread, because it's just been passed from pillar to post all these years. So I've kept him out as well. So there we go. I've kept me out some projects. I've got my treasure hunt bookshelf and I'm going to call it good for October and see where I get in November because it's good. Right, the paint I painted before my sudden, oh my goodness, I should have posted this video. Sudden feeling came over me. I was like, oh my goodness, the video. I didn't record yesterday. I meant to do it yesterday. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll go, and I'll go, my paint should be dry so I can get on with the next bit of those. And I'm going to finish watching Jemima because I am busy watching the rocking stitcher who has put up a whip parade after not posting for a year and a half. So thank you, Jemima, for taking the time to make us a video. I'm sure I'm not alone in the cross stitch community to go, oh my gosh, when I saw it, because I knew, I, I had a feeling when you finished the, the waterhole master, I'm just talking straight to you, Jemima, sorry. <laughs> um, that you would put a video out because it's such an astounding finish. If you haven't seen her finish of the Waterhole Master, go and watch Jemima's um, The Rocking Stitchers Whip Parade. She shows it almost straight away. She shows it in her finishes in a very, oh yeah, I finished this and I finished, oh, and by the way, I finished this. And she has to stand like this because it's enormous and it's amazing. So if you aren't, if you haven't watched it already, go, go, go now, go just, just, Press your, press your thing and go go and watch Jemima because she's not put a video out for so long. So let's let's just be thankful, very thankful that there's a big video there for us to see because there's a lot of stitching to catch up on, I think. Right, I'm gonna go and get this video sorted and I'll get it um, posted up today. And I'm gonna go and get on with a little bit of stitching and a little bit of making because I'm making things at the moment. Right guys, I will see you in a week or so we'll see how my days off go next week it will probably not be a whole week because i think i'm working the weekend so i might be off on friday i think i'm wednesday and friday next week off so it might be friday i do a proper proper bona fide ordinary floss tube if i can remember how to do it and keep track of what i've stitched on and everything so i'll see you then thank you so much for joining me on the october spin thing and thank you to crafting gaming jamie who gave me the idea on literally the last day of um, September and I thought that's an amazing idea and I ran upstairs and pulled out my box of whips and pulled out 31 <laughs> and uh, I've, had, I've, had, I've had real fun doing it, it's been really great. So I'm going to go and inhabit the living room until some children get up and as soon as the children are up I'm going to come into, the, I'm going to come into I nearly said the sewing room, I'm going to come into the conservatory and sit down at my sewing machine because I've got quite a lot of things to get on with at the sewing machine and I'll see you all later on. Bye bye for now.